Hi, this is National Master Dan Heisman, and we're here with another video to help you improve your chess game. I thought we'd do something on openings today. Um, the idea that I'd like to cover today is, suppose you want to be a player that plays d4 and then c4 on your first two moves. What kind of repertoire would you need to get? What kind of openings could you expect to be played against you as white so that you could grab the tabiaz that you needed against that opening and be prepared to play that. Playing d4 and then c4 is the second most popular opening, the second most complex opening in terms of learning opening lines. The most complex in term, terms of lines that you need to know would be to play e4. The second most would be to play d4 and c4. That's why people often play, you know, these general systems that avoid opening lines like the London or the King's Indian attack. But if you want to play the mainstream stuff, then you're going to be playing probably either e4 or d4, c4, or maybe you're going to be playing the English with transposition sometimes into d4 lines. But the question is, if you're playing d4, c4, what are the moves that you need to be prepared to play against? And of course, black can play dozens of different defenses, but let's look at the main ones. We're not going to look into the lines in any detail because, you know, each one could take its own set of videos. And we're just trying to overview what moves you need to be prepared to play against. So let's start. Let's say you play d4. There's three types of moves black can play against you. He can play queen's gambit -y kind of moves like d5. He can play Indian defenses like knight f6. And then there's everything else like, let's say, including the Dutch defense or maybe the transpositional e6 move. Let's start with the main lines, which are the d5 and the knight f6 lines. When black plays d5, of course, you're going to play c4. That's the whole idea of playing d4, c4. And this, we know, is the queen's gambit. The queen's gambit's not a real gambit. If black takes the pawn and tries to hold on, it doesn't work. If you've never practiced with a strong player with an engine, you could play black and try to hold on to the pawn and see that if white plays correctly, that black can not get a good game, cannot hold on to the pawn. So there's three main moves that you're going to play here. And the databases will help you. What I, what I have here on Leeches is what's called the master database. And he's telling you, here's the big three. If you look at how often these three moves were played, the Slav was played 87,000 times. The Queen's Gambit declined E6 was played 55,000. The Queen's Gambit accepted D takes C4 was played 20,000 times. And then it drops all the way down to 3,000. How does that help you? Well, it tells you that when you're preparing and you're worried about what the good moves are, you pretty much need to have a tabi off for those three. And then after that, it becomes much rarer. What's an, what's an example of a rare line? Well, black could play e5, which is the Alban counter gambit. Uh, if we go back a move, black could play knight c6, which I think is called the Chigorin defense. You know. Those are the things you would learn later. Those wouldn't be in your initial tabiaz that you would learn because they occur much less frequently. It's not that you'll never see them, but when you're first starting out and you say, I need to have something against this, against that, against some other things, those wouldn't be the first things on your list. So the big three are going to be Slav, they're going to be Queen's Gambit declined, all pawn moves, and Queen's Gambit accepted. And we could look at each very, very, very briefly since that's all we're going to do today. When people play the slob and they're threatening to take and then maybe guard the pawn, the general rule is if they're threatening to take and then guard the pawn, you should bring out your king knight first. That would be the main line against the slob. It's not a mistake to play the queen knight out. It's just a little bit less common. If you look over here on the database, knight f3 was played 57,000 times. Knight c3 was only played 22,000 times. So again, when you're preparing this, you want to be prepared with maybe the most common or the, or the lines the engine thinks is the best. Let's look at the Queen's Gambit declined. If there's Queen's Gambit declined, now you can play your Knight to C3 first, putting more pressure on D5. The main line is going to look something like Knight C3, Knight F6, Bishop G5. If you're ever wanting to play the exchange variation, you get in pawn takes, pawn takes, you get into what's called the Carlsbad pawn structure. We're, we're not, of course, going to get into that today. We're just going to tell you, you have to decide, 
is that the kind of position that you want to play or you want to play the kind of position you know where you're keeping the pressure on something like that all right if he plays queen's gambit accepted the main move in queen's gambit accepted is to play knight f3 and again let's look at the database database says knight f3 played 10,500 times the second most common move is the move most lower players like to play e4 but e4 was only played half as often 5,200 times and other moves like e3 were played even less often a lot of lower players like to play e3 with just the idea of getting that pawn back with the bishop as soon as they possibly can nothing wrong with it it's not the most popular line the most popular line is knight f3 all right so that covers the big three the slav the queen's gambit declined and the queen's gambit accepted but what if they don't do that what if they play an indian defense knight f6 all right then you play your move c4 and now black has lots of moves to play and let's look at the most common let's start with e6 after e6 white has a choice he can allow moves like the nimzo indian with knight c3 or he can try to avoid that which is the move that most grandmasters play now to avoid nimzo indian with knight f3 if you do if you are a knight c3 player then if black plays d5 here you'll notice we've transposed into the main line of the queen's gambit decline which we've already talked about and you already know what you want to do here you already have your tabia but if he plays bishop to b4 now we have a nimzo indian and you can see the two most popular moves by far against the nimzo indian is to play the classical line queen to c2 or the rubenstein line e3 and again those are you're going to pick one of those two and you're going to start to learn it those are going to whichever one you pick will be the tabia that you want to learn if you instead decide to play knight f3 and avoid that again black could head toward queen's gambit decline kind of lines with d5 where you could even play catalan system with g3 or black could play b6 which is known as the queen's indian and again g3 is a popular move petrosian's move a3 is a popular move you can see over here the database can help you you use the database to figure out which are the lines you want to study the third line that black could play is the bogo indian bishop to b4 check and here you can see that even though bishop d2 is the most common move that actually knight bd2 wins seven percent more games 32 percent white won with bishop d2 39 percent with knight bd2 so again you don't want to get to a game and go uh oh what do i do now if they're playing a main line against you you want to already have a move and say oh i studied the knight bd2 line when they play the bogo indian so let's go back over that again if d4 knight f6 c4 e6 then if you play knight f3 b6 is the queen's indian bishop b4 check is the bogo indian d5 could go to a queen's gambit are there other moves he could play yes they could play it like a benoni play c5 how often does that occur well let's look at the database that's the fourth most popular move but it's only 10,000 times played which is in fact they give you a percentage 8.9 percent of the games are c5 b6 is the most popular 41 percent d5 they're going to give us the percent here mr percent there it is 32 percent 16.6 percent on the bogo indian and again both the goodness of the results the engines evaluation of the position which you can see up here at the top and how many times it was played all these three pieces of information how well it did what the engines evaluation is and how often it was played are all going to help you pick out which line do I want to play if I'm white and study this of course if you're studying it for black you're going to do the exact same things but from black's point of view so you're going to look at those lines all right so that's the e6 lines but how about after d4 knight f6 c4 if he doesn't play e6 well we have a rare line the one two three four five sixth most common line here is e5 that's the line the budapest gambit uh howard stern used to play this for black some people play it for black but that's not the kind of move you're going to be worried about this this goes in the filing drawer with the albin counter gambit and the chigorin defense 
These are things you're going to learn after you learn the main lines first. So what else could he play? Well, he could play c5, which is the Benoni. And if you play d5, you have to be prepared for two lines. You need two tabiyas. One is if black plays a normal Benoni, let's say he plays e6, knight c3, pawn takes, pawn takes, d6, e4, g6. This is the main line of the modern Benoni. This is the way Tal used to play it. But actually, even more popular today, if we go back to the opening, even more popular today, after knight f6, c4, c5, d5, is black playing the Benko Gambit, b5. If we go back a move and we look what's the most popular move here for black, we'll see that the Benko Gambit b5 was played twice as often as the other moves. And again, this, these numbers, 15,000 compared to 8,000, they tell you which one are you most likely to run into when you're playing good players. If you play beginners, they can play anything. They can play h6. You don't know. But if you're looking for main lines, then these numbers are going to tell you. So b5, the Banco Gambit was played the most common. <clears throat> Usually you accept the Gambit. He offers the pawn, and now it starts to diverge. There's different moves that white can play. And again, you want to have a tabia a main line to play when people play the Benko Gambit. So you don't go, uh oh, Benko Gambit, I didn't study that. I have no idea what to do. That's what this video is about. We're about trying to recognize what are the most popular lines against D4, C4, and what, it, what is it that you should study. <clears throat> okay, let's go to D4, Knight F6, C4. We've looked at C5. We've looked at at e6, the, the other common move, the second most common move is g6. Now, so far we don't know what opening black is going to play. He could be playing a King's Indian, or he could be playing a Grinfeld. And here you have to decide whether you want to allow those things. If you play the main line, which is knight c3, the most common move, then black has a big choice to make. He can play the Grunfeld, d5, and most people like to play the exchange variation against the Grunfeld where they play something like this. And again, there's a tremendous amount of book on these things. Or you don't have to play the exchange variation. You could play a move like knight f3 or bishop f4 or bishop g5 or e3, sorry, e3, or even queen to b3. Like, for instance, knight f3, bishop g7. Now queen b3 is a major line called the Russian variation. We can see there's 4,522 times black played pawn takes pawn here. So that's a line. Let's go back to the start again. D4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3. So d5 here is the Grunfeld, and white wants to learn a line against the Grunfeld. And again, the database will help you. The engine will help you. Here the engine's running. Engine says, oh, at depth 50, I like bishop to g5. Well, that's interesting. The engine's number one move against the Grunfeld was only played 2,000 times compared to 19,000 with pawn takes pawn. But you might say, hey, if the computer likes it, I like it. I'll, play the, I'll learn the bishop g5 variation. <clears throat> and that can become your tabia. Okay, what else could happen? Well, instead of d5, after knight c3... If that's what you want to play, knight c3, threatening e4. If black says, go ahead and do that and plays bishop g7, now we've got the king's Indian, where white normally plays e4. He doesn't have to. It's just the most popular move, as we can see over here, 65,000 times, compared to knight f3, which is only 3,900. And then black usually plays d6. Fisher has a game in his My 60 Memorable Games. Where he didn't play d6, he plays castles. But the idea of d6 is to stop e5. And now the most popular move at the grandmaster level is bishop e2, but it usually transposes with bishop with knight to f3. And we can see in the database, the grandmasters, the masters don't care. They say, we'll play knight f3 first. But then after castles, bishop e2 is by far the most common move here. And now we're in the main line of the king's Indian. Let's go back to the start. Let's say you decide you're going to avoid those things. You're going to play an anti-Grunfeld. Well, the most common anti-Grunfeld here is to play f3. If we look at the database, go back a move, f3 is the fourth most common move. 
So the idea of f3 is if he tries to play the d5 stuff, you can just get a big center and he can't trade off the knights and the knight has to retreat instead. And this is considered good for white. We can see this evaluation is 0.8 up here. So black really doesn't want to get into this. 0.8 is a very, very big advantage. So f3 is considered an anti-Grunfeld. The most common move here for black is to play a king's Indian instead with like a Simish variation. And the computer says, or you could even transpose into some sort of Benoni structure with c5, and that would be better than playing d5. Another move you could play that's somewhat of an anti-Grunfeld is to play knight f3 here, with again the idea is if they play d5, which is not that popular, then you could take take and play e4, and now you actually have a, sort of a variation of the, of the inferior martial defense, which we'll talk about in a minute, which is not good for black, and we can see already black Black's disadvantage here is 1.0, which is a massive advantage for an opening. A normal opening advantage might be 0.2 or 0.3. If you get a, an advantage of like 1.0, you're right on the borderline of where the computer is saying that if the computer plays both sides for the rest of the game, the computer thinks it might be able to win for white already, which is a very, very big advantage. So let's go over that again. We're looking at d4, knight f6, c4, g6. We saw the main lines are with knight c3, which does allow the Grunfeld. And now we saw that moves like knight f3 discourage the Grunfeld. Black can still, of course, try to get into a king's Indian. Or you could even play more aggressively and play f3 against that setup. So that's quite different than the e6 lines. These are uh, a little bit more aggressive for both sides. If black's playing for draws, then very often they, they like for equality. Playing those Nimzo Indian and Bogo Indians are, are very good for fighting for equality. If you're fighting for advantage, then these lines are, real, are more sharp for both sides. Okay, so what have we got now? Well, we haven't gone into those non-Indian, non-D5 um, lines. We said D5 is one of the moves that people play and Knight F6 is the other. We mentioned you could play a Dutch. Okay, in a Dutch, one of the things I learned against a Dutch is Fienketo against the Dutch. So here, if we look at the database, G3 is, instead of playing your normal move, C4, since you're learning a D4, C4 repertoire, the normal move here is to play C4, but, but C4 is only the third most popular move at the master level. It's not that they don't put the pawn on C4, they just delay it. They play G3 and say, what line of the Dutch do you want to play, Mr. Black? Knight F6, we played G3, we're going to Fienketo. Now the two main lines are g6 and e6. e6 is the main line, but actually we can see at the master level, g6, the Leningrad variation, I believe it's called, semi-Leningrad variation, is the most popular. And now we see knight f3, bishop g7, castle, castle. And now comes that your, your favorite second move there, c4, but we've waited till the sixth move to set up that position little bit of uh, nuance in the move order there by doing that. Okay, so, so Dutch is d4, f5. What else could black play? Well, now we're getting a little rare. If he plays the transpositional e6, then he's asking you, would you like to play a French defense with e4? If you're a d4, c4 player and that's what you're studying, you probably say, no, thank you. And then they say something like, all right, well, then I'll play a Dutch where you can't play the Staunton Gambit because you played c4, or I'll play a Queen's Gambit declined, notice the transpositions, or I'll play Knight f6, and here we are back in our Knight f6 e6 openings, where you have to decide whether you're allowing the, the Bogo Indian and the Queen's Indian, or are you going and allowing the Nimzo Indian. Notice it doesn't make any difference what move order we get to, we get to the same position. So. If we play d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, that's the exact same position as d4, e6, c4, knight f6, and now knight f3. We just got there by reversing black's two moves. Turns out it doesn't make that much of a difference unless you want to transpose this white into the French defense, which we assume if you're learning d4, c4, you don't want to do because then you just have to learn more stuff. So e6 can be very transpositional. Depending on what black wants to do, 
after d4 e6, he could go to queen's gambit, he can go to Indian, he could go, if you play e4, then he's going to play French, and so on. So e6 is transpositional. Are there any other moves we need to know? Well, if he plays c6, if you play e4, he could play Karo Can, but if you play c4, then he's probably going to play Slav. Again, transpositional. Not, not independent. If, he play, if you play d4 and he plays b6, well, you could still play c4, nothing wrong with that, or you could play e4, and now he's playing the queen's fan keto defense. If you want at this point, you could play like bishop d3, and later if you want to play c4, you can, or you could even play c3. That's a very, again, very rare defenses. <clears throat> How do I know they're rare? Easy. After d4, if we look for b6 on this little scroll bar here, Knight f6 is number one, d5 number two, e6 number three, <clears throat> d6 number four. B6 is way, way down there. There it is. It's like number 9 or 10. So you're not going to worry about that much. It's not that common. People do play it occasionally, but don't worry about it. Okay, what else do we need to know? Well, not too much more. Again, you're going to be using these databases. We're using an opening book. We're using a video. We're using the engine. You've got all these wonderful modern tools to help you learn what, whichever tabiaz you want to play. If you haven't seen my earlier video on using the database, you can do that. If you haven't seen my earlier video on picking out opening lines and deciding which ones you want to play, how do you pick out which lines you want to play, I have a separate video just on that. Uh, I should mention the martial defense because it's such a common, you know, inaccuracy for black. A lot of times people who are not very good get confused. And when you play a queen's gambit, instead of playing the queen's gambit declined or the slav or the... Queen's Gambit accepted, they play knight f6. Notice this is exactly the same position you would get to if they played knight f6 first, and you play your c4 move, and they play d5. Same difference. This is actually an inaccuracy, and if you haven't seen my earlier video on inaccuracies, or you haven't seen it on AWLs, attack with something worth less, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to lure a piece to the d5 square. If he takes with the queen, you AWL him with the knight. If you AWL him with the knight while he's developing a piece, and then he has to move that piece again, and you get to develop the piece, then we call that winning a tempo. If, on the other hand, he takes with the knight, then you want to play e4, but you don't want to play it right away. If you look here at the top, the cloud says depth 53, meaning people have left this run overnight. And the engine agrees with what I was taught when I was a beginner, which is the better way to play against this is to play knight f3 first to discourage them from playing the break move e5. And then if they play almost anything, then you play e4 with a big, big, big advantage. Look at that advantage already. White is ahead by 1.7. That's pretty much the computer saying, let me play the rest of the game for both sides, and I'm going to win like almost every game with white already. Suppose black tries to play bishop f5 after knight f3. That's about the only move he can play that really stops you from winning a tempo. The engine says, play knight bd2 and threaten to play here. If he doesn't do anything, you're going to play e4. Let's say he plays knight f6 to now stop you from doing that. There's, he's lost, he's already moved that knight three times. The engine says you can get a tremendous position here with either g3, that's the number one move, and white's way ahead in development, or even play queen b3 and attack this weak pawn on b7. Also a good way to play it here, it's at 1.0, depth 40. g3 is at 1.1, depth 29. 29's not, not, not a long overnight th think anyway. So these are great ways to play this. So whenever you see this position, if you're a d4, c4 player, you should memorize how to play against it, because if you're playing people rated under 15 or 1400, you're going to see this a lot, even though it's not really an opening at all. It's called the Marshall defense, but it's not really a real defense. If we look at how common it is, it's very rare, except if you compare a regular database, which has everybody's games, with a master database. We're looking at a master database, and you can see this is very rare. It's, we're looking at lines, instead of in the tens of thousands, we're looking at 65 and 174 and 56. Very, very rare, you know, because good players don't do this. 
for black. But again, you want to take that pawn, and when he takes back, knight f3, probably followed by e4, and you have a good game. Really worth knowing if you're a d4, c4 player. Okay, so what did we do today? We looked at if you're a d4, c4 player, what are all the main lines that black's going to play against you? And we came up with about a little more than a dozen tabiyas that you need to know, maybe 14 or 15. Well, if it takes you 20 or 30 minutes to learn each one times 15, that's a good seven or eight hours, but you don't have to do it in one day. You could do it over a period of a month or so, and you've got yourself a D4, C4 repertoire. Now, do you need to find your repertoire yourself? No, you could buy a book that's, you know, a rep complete repertoire with D4, C4. There's a, several books like that. You could Google, go to YouTube and say D4, C4 repertoire and see what pops up. Um, you can, you know, just Google. You don't even have to go to YouTube. You can just Google D4, C4 repertoire. And there's probably websites that give you D4, C4 repertoires. So it, it's, it's not something that you have to do yourself. You can... You can find this stuff for free. You could purchase a book on it. There's lots of ways to get D4, C4 repertoires. It's the second most common repertoire for white after E4. Yes, we know Londons are popular when people want to avoid doing all the stuff we talked in today's video, but these are really the popular master lines, and uh, you learn a lot when you learn these main lines as well. Are openings important? Of course they are. I always tell people openings are the only part of the game that you're going to get to every game. All right, so if you enjoyed today's video, you can tell your friends about the channel. That's the main thing I ask everybody to do. You can subscribe, you can like the video, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.